Hey Quillers, I hope you're having an amazing day and welcome back to another video. So today's topic is one that will help you with building your personal brand and it's about how to leverage LinkedIn as a freelance writer. Now, to be honest, when I first started out my freelance writing journey, I thought that I would just drop LinkedIn since for so long, in my mind, it was a place for mainly full-timers. It was a place where I would go apply to full-time jobs, where I would connect with hiring managers, HR specialists and all of that and it wasn't just a place to be if I was a freelancer but I was so so wrong because in fact LinkedIn is one of the most freelancer friendly places that I've been on in terms of social media platforms I would go as far as saying that it's my absolute favorite one for building my personal brand and I prefer it over things like Instagram TikTok Facebook and all of that so maybe I've gotten a few leads from Instagram but the rest I haven't gotten any leads and on LinkedIn is where I get the most leads, especially inbound ones. But there are also a lot of outbound projects that I'm interested in and that I apply to through LinkedIn and I've gotten some of my best clients from LinkedIn. So the topic is quite a huge one. So there are a lot of things to be done to leverage LinkedIn as a freelance writer. But in this video, I'm going to share with you eight of the quickest things that you can just optimize today or right away to make sure that you're getting the most out of your LinkedIn profile and then and for the rest, I'm going to be planning a LinkedIn masterclass where I can go deeper into the topics that just simply can't be spoken about in a short YouTube video. So if you're interested in that, just drop the word LinkedIn in the comments below so I can add you to its waiting list and let you know via email once it's available. So let's get into the eight hacks that you should absolutely adjust on your profile right now to get the most out of your LinkedIn profile. First things first, and this is a very, very easy one, is to change the headline on your profile. So by default, LinkedIn sets this headline to be the latest job that you've added to your profile, but sometimes that isn't accurate because what if you left the full-time world and you're no longer working at the company that is in your headline right now, so you need to change that right away. There are a lot of options, of course, when it comes to headlines, but the most important thing you want to know is that headlines are very important for searchability, and so you need to be very strategic about the keywords that you're using. And when I say search Ability, I mean that when a potential client is searching for copywriters and content writers, you want to pop up among the search results. And that usually happens as a result of spreading these keywords throughout your LinkedIn profile. And of course, that includes the headline. So you have two options. The first is that you can follow the I help X do Y formula, of course. So it's like I help business owners get more conversions through copywriting, for instance. That's just a very, very lame example, but I just wanted to show you what the formula would look like. The other option is that you just write your title. So it's basically freelance copywriter or freelance content writer specializing in etc. if you have a particular niche and that could also be enough. Of course, the more keywords that you can use that relate to your niche and to your services in the headline, the better. Just don't try to get overly creative with the headline because again, this is important for SEO purposes. It's not where you want to demonstrate your creative skills just yet. Number two, and not many people know about this, is changing your LinkedIn URL. And again, this is also important for the same point that relates to searchability and SEO. So by default, when you create your LinkedIn profile, you're automatically assigned a URL. It maybe has your name, but it also has a bunch of numbers and a bunch of alphabetical letters and things like that. And it isn't exactly the easiest to remember. So you want your LinkedIn URL to be something that clients can easily search for, can easily memorize. And of course, it can easily pop up as well in search results. So this can be, again, very very strategic like for instance your name like your first name dash your last name uh, dash and then freelance copywriter or it can just be freelance copywriter or freelance content writer whatever it is the most important thing is that you want to choose the right keywords so I know people have like health copywriter for instance and you want to eliminate all the numerals so that the link is more easy to read and searchable and all of that number three is adding a link to your portfolio in your contact info section so you've probably updated this last time like ages ago but now LinkedIn actually has an option where you can add a link to your portfolio or to your personal website whatever the most important thing is that this is a really really great feature to leverage because it gives your portfolio the visibility that it needs without clients having to necessarily reach out to you to ask for it and all that so it adds to the convenience of the entire situation 
Number four is adding a call to action button to your profile. So this is a relatively new feature. So I think it's like a year or two maybe ago that it was introduced. And this is just like it sounds, it's a clickable button that is added to your profile and it can, once clients click on it, they can be redirected to whatever page that you want. So for instance, it can be like book a discovery call and it could lead to your Calendly where clients can book an appointment with you. It could be hire me and it could lead to your website where you have a list of your services. It can lead to a lead magnet, for instance, that you have to collect email addresses so that people are added to your email list. Whatever it is, this is a great, again, feature to make it easier for clients to get in touch with you and for them to take that first step that you would love them to take and is very visible on the top of the profile so it's really great for when someone is just entering your profile for the very first time so think about what you really want that call to action to be and go ahead and add it number four is using the featured section to really showcase your best work so a lot of people make the mistake of, you know, making their featured section just a bunch of posts that got the most likes or got the most traction or whatever. I highly advise against that. Instead, this is really, really valuable real estate that you should leverage to make clients see what you want them to see. So this could be a link to your portfolio or even better, it could be a link to a couple of samples that have already been published online that you're really proud of and that you want as many clients as possible to see. The best thing is that you can add links, you can add media, so images, you can add a short blurb to describe what the project was. So it's a really, really good space. And the number of items that you can add is pretty high. But remember that clients are probably not going to scroll past the first three or five. So choose these pieces wisely. And again, forget about the whole pinning the posts that got the most traction kind of thing. Next is filling your profile with testimonials and endorsements. So if we know one thing to be true is that testimonials carry a lot of weight when it comes to potential clients. So clients always want to know that you've actually worked with clients before, that they've had a pleasant experience just so they can trust you, right? And so sometimes the only way that you have to showcase these testimonials is either within your portfolio, on your website, or any other third party source basically but with LinkedIn the good thing is that you can add them straight to your profile so whenever clients are about to give you a testimonial that you've asked for why not ask them to just directly add it to your LinkedIn profile that way whenever someone is visiting your profile especially when you build a personal brand for yourself and there will be a lot of viewers to your profile it's a good thing to have a list of you know endorsements for your skills and also testimonials and references from clients that you previously worked with. It's a great, great way to add value and authority to your profile, so don't ever skip that. Number seven is adding any courses that you took or any certifications relating to either the niche that you're in or writing itself or freelancing to the licenses and certifications section. This is a great way to demonstrate that you not only have the practical skills that it takes to be a writer, but that they're also based in you know knowledge, based in education, and that you've taken courses to build up your skills, it shows that you're constantly honing your skills and it just shows that you're up to date with current best practices. So this is something that you also shouldn't be skipping. Finally, and last but not least, and I saved the hardest one to the end, and I hope that the seven past ones have been very easy and very quick to implement. The last one is to constantly update your experience section. And this is where a lot of freelance writers get stuck because they think that, am I going to put every single client that I've worked with? Because sometimes you work with more than 50 clients. Are you going to put each one? Especially if you're working like on a short term basis with clients or on a project basis, then the duration itself is very, very short. It can sometimes be like a week, two weeks, a month maybe. So the answer is no, this is not the way to do it. So I'm going to share with you what I do and what I've also seen a lot of freelance writers do and I think it's very, very comfortable. So one thing you do is that you only add one entry for yourself as a freelance writer. So basically this is where you add the, you know, the click add job thing, I think, or add experience and then it asks you for for the details this is where you're going to write that you are a freelance copywriter or content writer and then you're going to write your business name if you have one if not then you're just going to write your full name and then you're going to describe in the description box the services that you offer the niches that you work with and this is a very very great opportunity to also insert the link to your portfolio so this takes up
up the bulk of your profile and then what I personally oh you could also add a couple of your notable clients if you want that so this is what I personally do and also what I do if I've been working with retainers for a long time so you know sometimes I work with my clients for more than a year or two then I really like to spotlight those clients so what I do is that I add these as separate entries and then I just write like freelance writer content writer and copywriter whatever it is that I'm doing for them and then when it asks me like the type of employment I simply choose free freelance and this is why I'm telling you that LinkedIn is very very freelance friendly and so again you always have the option to choose that you're working with a company on a freelance basis and just like that you would have updated your experience section rather than leaving it empty or not updated since you left the full-time world and that kind of thing so these are my favorite eight steps to just very easily change how your LinkedIn profile is performing I love that they're very easy to implement and I hope you found them the same too of course there is a lot more to be said about updating your LinkedIn profile so there's the whole issue of how to to write your about section in a way that gets you conversions and gets you the most attraction on your LinkedIn profile. There's also how should you exactly build your personal brand, right? Because it's not only about updating your profile, but it's also about being visible, posting content, sharing content, engaging with others, building your network and all of that. So there is a ton more to be said, which is why I'm going to be creating a LinkedIn masterclass or course. I'm not sure yet. It will happen depending on the amount of content that I have to share with you because again LinkedIn is one of the best ways to get inbound leads and to build a personal brand for yourself so if you're interested in that please drop the word LinkedIn in the comments below and if you have any suggestions on what to include in that masterclass or if you have anything that you would like to see inside please do share that with me in the comments I love to hear your feedback and to take into consideration what you want to see as I build the course so please don't hesitate to leave that and of course if you have any questions let me know in the comments that's it from me for today if you like this video make sure to like the video below of course and also to subscribe to my channel i post on wednesdays and i speak about freelancing about copywriting and about content writing i'd love to have you here and until next video take care